Good morning, church. Good to be with you for another week of our online church service. If you're new, maybe stopping by for the first time. Welcome aboard. Uh, to everyone, I pray you had a blessed week, and I pray that your week was filled with more sweet than sour thoughts. Sounds like a challenging topic, perhaps, to dig into today. And maybe for those who've been following along with our online videos, about a year and a half or so ago, we went through the great adventure uh, of, the, of a series. Uh, I, a lot of folks don't understand my hang-up. I don't do many series uh, of sermons in my preaching. I've done maybe two or three. Uh, I just have my own personal hang-ups. But a year and a half ago, I did it. We dove right into the sweet and sour teachings of Jesus, where we would take each week and dig deeper into a different teaching from Jesus on many different topics. And, and through that process, I, I, for one, certainly came to get a deeper understanding of what the prophets went through. Uh, when God would deliver some word to them and then say, I need you to take my word and deliver it to my people. And those prophets would reveal what that experience was like. They would take that word and eat it. They would take it in and, and they would use words. They would say it was sweet like honey. But then once it sank in, once it began to digest, if you will, and they realized what it actually was saying, they said that it became bitter in their stomach. If you remember John in Revelation, uh, he was being led around by this angel and was shown many different visions and told, write down what you see. And then in, in Revelation 10, there's an event where that angel is standing and has a little scroll in its hand. It has the word. And John is given the command, I want you to go and I want you to eat that. Take it in so that you can spread it and you can deliver it to the people. And if you remember what John's response was as he went and took that scroll and ate it, Revelation 10.10, 10, it says that it tasted as sweet as honey in his mouth. But when he had eaten it, his stomach turned sour. This morning I've come with some encouragement and a challenge to hopefully get us to grow in our understanding of sweet and sour thinking. Concerning the process of what we need to go through to help us to consider what it is to have sweet and sour thinking. Hopefully, we all understand that there is a continuous battle that rages around all of us on a daily basis. And it's a battle between the spiritual forces of evil. It's not flesh and blood. Remember, scriptures tell us it's, it's between the spiritual forces of evil and the heavenly realms. And the battle is against the spiritual forces of good. And one of the most important battlegrounds where most of those battles are fought is in our minds. And the strategy of the spiritual forces of evil is simple to identify. It's not complicated at all. Their main goal, simply to break through the fortress in our minds and just plant Plant a small evil thought, sort of like a seed. Just plant a little seed of, of an evil thought and let it take root. A destructive thought, a negative thought. And that root can grow, and once it does, it will take over all thoughts, and it will control us and can ultimately destroy us. That's the battle that rages every day. And God warns us throughout his story of this raging battle, the battle that is fought in our minds. In fact, if you have your Bibles ready, if you would get those Bibles out and let's turn to, to Romans chapter 8. Paul is going to deliver some of the details of what God wants his people to know about this battle and how important it is to understand where it's taking place, that it's in our minds. He's going to begin with the introduction, it says, of, of explaining why he had to send his only son, Jesus, to, to be a sin offering so that through that sacrifice, people could choose to believe the gospel, that he came and died for them, for their sins, and God raised him from the dead. 
and to respond to that by confessing their sins and then to proclaim Jesus as Lord, as the Messiah, and then to be immersed in the waters of baptism and receive the gift of the Holy Spirit that is put within all of the believers of God to teach and to guide and to protect and to admonish. And that by through that, that he can take his stand. The Holy Spirit helps us in the battle so that we could never be defeated as long as we live by the Spirit. Now let's listen to those words as, as Paul will bring it out to the church in Rome. In, in Romans 8 and verse 5, he says, To those who live according to the sinful nature, they have their minds set on what that nature desires. This is the evil. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. This is the good. The mind of sinful man is death, and the mind controlled by the Spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. Then he says it doesn't submit to God's law, nor can it do so. This is the evil. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. And keep in mind, this all starts where? In the minds. In our minds. He says you, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit. If the Spirit of God lives in you, and if anyone doesn't have the Spirit of Christ, he doesn't belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. And if the Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, oh, how I love that statement. The Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead is the same Spirit that lives in us as children of God. And Paul will tell the saints in Rome, he says, if, if that Spirit of Him who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you, then He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through His Spirit who lives in you. Therefore, here comes the so what of it all. How does it apply to us today talking about sweet and sour thinking, talking about this battle that we know rages and it is in our minds? How does it apply? Well, he says, therefore, we have an obligation, but it's not to the sinful nature to live according to it. For if you live according to the sinful nature, you'll die. But if by the Spirit you put to death the misdeeds of the body... You're going to live. Wow. Here is God revealing and saying, may you never forget. There is a battle that rages every day. And it's against the spirit. It's against the, the, the spirit of good and the evil forces. The spiritual forces of evil. Every day it rages. But most importantly of all, as Paul says, if you've got the spirit, then you cannot be defeated in this battle. So therefore, he says in verse 12, we have an obligation. Yes, there's that word. It's an obligation. It's our responsibility not to live by the sinful nature, but to live by the nature of the Spirit. We have an obligation to take our stand, to, to put guards up to protect our minds. That's where the battle's being fought. We need to protect our minds from what we allow in. And we need to definitely protect our minds from evil and negative and destructive and hurtful thoughts. And we need to fill our minds with only good and positive and encouraging and helpful thoughts. And maybe I'm not the only one at this point to say, oh great, another message on this. This is all we got to do. And I'm going to say, no, I'm the first guy that's going to stand and say, it's easier said than done. Shouldn't be. But it is. Are there people involved? And I, I are one. <laughs> we live in a world, don't we? We live in a world that's saturated, that's full, that's consumed with evil, negative, destructive thoughts. 
go out anywhere, go to the mall, go to the grocery store, go to the post office. You're going to see it in action. And what is the saying that is so true? I've come to believe this is so true when it comes to this statement of what the world is filled with negative, terrible things. And misery loves company. Herein lies the battle. So what do we need to do? We need to test ourselves first and foremost. Examine yourself. That's scriptural. Try it for one day even. I like the practical in these parts of sermons. Try it for one day. You yourself track every negative or destructive or evil thought that you have. One day. And when you have a thought about yourself or about someone else or about something that's happening or something that's about to happen and your thought is negative or critical or hurtful or judgmental or damaging, then just jot it down. Take a note. Make a record of it. Have a little notepad or a piece of paper and track yourself for a day. Used to be they'd have the rubber bands, you know, put a rubber band and every time you think something negative, pop yourself. I... That hurt too much for me. My wrist was red. So I had to stop. I said, there's got to be something else. Take a note. And at the end of every day, review your list. How many thoughts during that day were helpful and encouraging and positive, happy thoughts? And how many thoughts were negative? How many thoughts were destructive? How many thoughts were critical or judgmental? And ask yourself, as as you finish this process, you can then ask yourself and determine on any given day what percent of your thoughts are positive, helpful, encouraging. And what percent of your thoughts are negative or critical or destructive. Herein lies the challenge as we dig deeper in sweet and sour thinking. And to go a little deeper, then we got to ask this question. As you look around in the world, and perhaps you yourself, if you can answer the question for yourself, do you ever feel depressed? Do you ever feel anxious? Do you ever feel lonely? Do you ever feel worthless? Do you ever feel ugly? Do you ever feel angry? Do you ever feel hopeless? Most importantly of all, Do you ever wonder why you feel the way you do from day to day? I'll offer the answer. Everything. Everything connected to every one of those thoughts begins and ends in our minds. Whether you think you're worthy or worthless, you're right. Whether you think you're ugly or beautiful, you're right. Whether you think people like you or people hate you, you're right. Whether you think you're a winner or a loser, you're right. All in the mind. The most powerful part of our bodies. Because our minds can convince us that we're something that we're actually not. You're not worthless. You're definitely not ugly. God created you in His image. People don't hate you. You're not a loser. But in your mind, if you tell yourself that, if you convince yourself that, then guess what? You are all of those terrible things. It doesn't matter if it's true. Your mind, those thoughts, can convince you. And the battle rages on. And in this case, the spiritual forces of evil have broken through, obviously and planted those seeds of doubt. And they've taken root, and they've grown up, and they've taken control of your thoughts to the point that they can ultimately destroy you. It's all as a result of sin, by the way. God didn't create us with this fault, this defect, if you will. God knew what the consequences of sin was going to be on His creation after they sinned. He created them in perfection, in goodness, Then they had to eat from that tree, didn't they? The knowledge of good and evil. Their eyes were opened and then it all came to an end. Kind of brings us to our so what this morning. How does this apply to us? 
What is the solution? Can we talk again about solutions for our struggles concerning sweet and sour thinking? If you find yourself at the end of the day where the majority of your thoughts are negative and critical and judgmental and hurtful and destructive, what is the solution? How about this? We could apply our, our own solutions as someone created, <laughs> quite effective, I might say, like when we struggle, maybe our struggle is with saying bad words. Do you remember the solution that somebody came up with? What's the solution? Anyone watching? Maybe you can do a little acknowledgement where you are. Anyone ever had your mouth washed out with soap? Uh, even that phrase, washed out with soap. <laughs> it was pretty effective for me. I don't know about you, whoever came up with it, man, that's a solution, isn't it? If every time you said something bad, you had your, your mouth washed, and really, if you had the horrific experience of the most awful, the nastiest tasting of all soap Irish spring, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Very effective. In fact, I've looked, they don't have it on, shouldn't they put a warning and not for human consumption is what I believe should be on every bar of soap. For those people still holding to that consequence of the one who slips that occasional bad word. Uh, and it's a solution, is it not? What if we applied that to our thoughts? What would it look like for you if every time you had a negative or a bad or a hurtful thought, you didn't snap your wrist with a rubber band, you had to wash your mind out with soap? How many bars of soap would you need on average every day? Thankfully, thankfully we can find a solution that doesn't involve soap. It's soap free and it comes from the absolute perfect solution and this comes from God. Realizing that God knows all about our struggles when it comes to sweet and sour thinking. And God gives us multiple solutions through his word. Multiple plans to help us through the struggles to, to, to get on top of and to defeat sour thinking. The negative, the destructive, the hurtful, the evil thinking. So many passages, the ones that I, I love, that I try to apply to myself, Philippians 4, 8, where Paul will say, listen, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, here it comes, think about such things. These are the things that you need to fill your minds with. Let these things, these thoughts occupy your mind and don't let any negative come in colossians 3 he will tell the saints in colossae in colossians 3 verse 1 since then you've been raised with christ set your hearts on things above where christ is seated at the right hand of god set your minds on things above not on earthly things and there's enough, I don't know about you, but just in these two passages to last a lifetime for us to focus on each and every day in this battle of sweet and sour thinking that goes on in our minds. And we need to take to heart these solutions. Take note of every thought the instant it enters your mind. Ask yourself first, is it true? How many times have you allowed a thought to enter your mind that ended up destroying you, that ended up overwhelming you with sadness or anger or any other negative emotion, and only to find out at the end, when you got further details, you found out it wasn't even true. So it is, God is saying, before you allow a thought to enter your mind and set up camp, ask yourself and test it, is it true? And if it's not, don't let it sit there. Get rid of it instantly and replace it with a thought that is positive and most importantly, true. Is it a thought that's noble? Before you allow that thought, does the thought have high moral values for you? Is there something positive that can come from allowing that thought to stay in your mind? If not, cast it out and replace it with the thought that does. Is the thought right? Is it connected to something sure and positive? If not, do not allow it to stay in your mind. 
throw it out and replace it with the thought that is right? Is the thought pure? Oh, this is a good one. Is it spotless? Is it free from contamination or corruption? If, if not, throw it out and replace it with a thought that is pure. When the thought enters your mind, you need to ask yourself, is this thought lovely? Is it pleasant? Is it enjoyable? Is it attractive? Well, how can a thought be attractive? You know the answer to this. Is it something that is pleasing? If not, throw it out and replace it with one that is. If it causes you to feel terrible about yourself, if it causes you to feel pain, if it causes you to feel sorrow, get rid of it and replace it with something that is lovely. Is it admirable? Is it a thought deserving of great respect and approval? If not, throw it out and replace it with the thought that is admirable. We can break it all down to the last description. Ask yourself this when a thought wants to enter into your mind, and you have really no control over thoughts. They just come. I'm not sure about you, but I have random thoughts. I've got many going on right now in my mind, and the struggle is real. But I'm saying we don't have control over that, but we have all control over what we allow to remain and to set up and to occupy our minds. And ask yourself this question most of all, is the thought that is seeking entrance into your mind, is it a thought that is excellent or praiseworthy? How about having this as your main filter in your mind? When a thought is trying to enter in, is that thought that just entered your mind a thought that would be defined as excellent? A thought that is worthy to be praised for how good, how awesome, how sweet it is? If not, if it's something that is not praiseworthy, cast it out and replace it instantly with a thought that is excellent and praiseworthy. The battle rages on every day, this sweet and sour thinking. Be very careful how you think. Our struggle is we live in a world that's 24 hours a day, negative, destructive, evil, hateful, corrupt, dishonest. Take action every day to take your stand against the sour thoughts that make their way into your mind and want to set up camp. Get your strategy together and attack. Research tells us that a brain that has been consumed with sour and negative thoughts can be, in fact, rewired. It can be changed. It can be reversed to where it can be filled with only sweet and positive thoughts. We're told that a habit, and by the way, if you're consumed with negative, hurtful, critical, judgmental thoughts, it's, it's a habit if you do it on a habitual uh, nature. It takes about 21 days for a habit to set up. 21 days for a habit to be ingrained, so to speak. So, so doing something to reverse and change the habit means you have to replace it with some other habit. So count on three weeks. Three weeks of commitment, of devotion, of your energy and your efforts. Do you have 21 days worth of those kinds of things to change your brain from sour to sweet? Start with this solution from God's Word. Every morning, every day, start off doing what the psalmist tells us in, in Psalm 9, verses 1 through 2. I'll give thanks to you, Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonderful deeds. When was the last time you started your morning by proclaiming what God has done for you? And it is so good, so sweet. Psalmist says, I'll be glad and I'll rejoice in you. I will sing the praises of your name, O oh, Most High. It's so easy to talk about all the negative things. It's so easy to talk about all the things that have gone wrong in our lives. But how about if we replace those with positive? What are you thankful for? What actually went right? Are you able to proclaim that and give thanks to God? And maybe you say, oh, I can't think of anything. And I'd say, of course not. Your brain has been programmed to keep track of only negative, only terrible, only critical things. It needs to be rewired. It needs to be reprogrammed. And it can be done. 
It's time to reprogram. Take your stand against any negative, destructive, evil thought that's trying to make its way into your mind. Only allow positive and good and encouraging and helpful thoughts to get through to stay. If you're surrounded by negative, discouraging, gossiping people, get away from them. Or, as God would say from scriptures, come out from amongst them. Don't have anything to do with that. You don't need those things in your mind. You watching the news? Stop it. Oh, you hear it from me often, and you're, you're going to hear more and more because it's not getting any better. It's getting worse every day. Either stop it or you got to put up extra strength titanium guards to, to block the destructive, the negative, the terrible, the critical, the awful, the horrifying things and thoughts that want to enter into your mind just from watching the news. Consider these recent statistics concerning the news. 26.7, almost 30% of people that are exposed to negative news go on to develop anxiety. You wonder why you're anxious. Start there. In a recent nationwide survey, almost two-thirds, 63% of U.S. kids, these are kids we're talking about all the way up into their teen years, say that watching the news makes them feel depressed and angry or even afraid. No kidding. And yet, for so many people, in fact, the same research reveals one out of every ten We'll check on the news every single hour just to see if something new is being reported. Some new spin on some horrific event. And then they wonder why they feel so depressed or so angry or so afraid or so anxious at the end of the day. Stop it. Don't let that evil into your minds. Filter it out. There's no reason for any of us as God's children to go through life with our brains wired for negative, evil, destructive, critical, judgmental, hurtful thoughts, the sour thinking. God has given us everything we need. May we never forget His Word. He will tell us this specifically, 2 Peter 1, 3. His divine power has given us everything we need to live a godly life. Through our knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and His goodness. He's given us everything we need through His Holy Spirit that's within us. It can be done. In fact, we were created to be, have those sweet thoughts and only sweet thoughts. Maybe you're watching and some things have kind of clicked and you're ready to reprogram. And Maybe you haven't taken the first step of surrendering and letting, know, letting God know you've done your part in trying to live your life according to what you say is right and wrong, but it hasn't worked out. And you're willing and ready now to surrender to God and let Him take control. To proclaim that you, in fact, are a sinner and you need a Savior, which only comes through Jesus Christ who came and died on a cross for you, and God raised him from the dead. And you're ready to confess that he is Lord, to be immersed in the waters of baptism, to receive that gift of the Holy Spirit. May God bless us and help us to be a people that takes our stand continuously each and every day. It takes our stand against the sour thinking that we're surrounded with in this world. And that we can, in fact, be the people that shows the world how God can help all of us to be a people filled with only sweet thinking. Until next time, keep the faith.